हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर पी के आलूवालिया फ्रॉम फिजिक्स डिपार्टमेंट हिमाचल प्रदेश यूनिवर्सिटी शिमला टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल एंटाइटल्ड इंसाम्बल थ्योरी क्लासिकल पार्ट टू एंसाम्बल लाइवलीज थ्योरम एंड एरेगोडिसिटी from paper statistical mechanics so students let us see what are we going to learn in this module we intend to appreciate the statistical approach called ensemble method for understanding the properties of a given macroscopic system underlining the need for such an approach define an ensemble characterized by thermodynamic variables such as internal energy number of particles volume temperature number of particles and volume and chemical potential number of particles and volume etc understand the concept of statistical density function or statistical distribution function represented by rho as a function of q p and t and link it to the ensemble average of a physical quantity and see its advantage over the equivalent time averaging we also wish to see how knowledge of probability function allows us to calculate average values of a physical quantity derive lavalier's theorem that the statistical distribution function is constant along the phase trajectory of the system and discuss its significance in statistical physics lively's theorem as a conservation of phase space volume and to have a recipe for deriving thermodynamics from statistical root show that the ensemble average of any physical quantity is equal to the value one expects to obtain on making an appropriate measurement that is the time average of a physical quantity is equal to the ensemble average of the same physical quantity called ergodic hypothesis define an ensemble characterized by thermodynamic variables such as e and v t and v and mu and v etc understand the concept of fluctuations root mean square fluctuation and relative fluctuation for a given physical quantity and prove that relative fluctuation of a physical quantity varies inversely as square root of the number of particles in the system this module has been developed for post graduate level as per the following sub topics ensemble an abstract useful concept statistical probability distribution function proof of lively's theorem significance of lively's theorem and types of ensembles ergodicity time average versus ensemble average statistical independence root mean square fluctuation and relative fluctuation new approach to look at multiparticle systems dear students we have already learned the concept of phase space and its properties in module 10 In this module we introduce an altogether new concept of an ensemble introduced by J W Gibbs in his famous book Elementary Principles in Statistical Mechanics fully well realizing that in the study of macroscopic systems we are dealing with a situation which cannot be approached from point of view of motion of these huge number of particles J W Gibbs introduced this new idea without improving on the inherent lack of information about the system and paved way for applying statistical approach to arrive at mean value of a physical quantity via the concept of statistical distribution function or statistical probability density function to begin with ensemble sounds an obscure abstract concept but later turns out to be an extremely useful one to lay 
the statistical scaffolding to understand many particle physical systems. We in this module state and prove Lively's theorem pertaining to probability density function and explore its properties embodied in the theorem. We also explore the statistical meaning of mean value, root mean square fluctuation and relative fluctuation. We wind up our discussion on foundation of ensemble theory by looking at the meaning of ergodicity. Now we will focus on ensemble which is an abstract useful concept. Ensemble is a French word meaning a group. In day to day conversation we are familiar with the usage of this term applied to a group of musicians in a band forming say philharmonic ensemble. In this module we look at this concept as applied to a group of phase points in phase space representing different microstates of a given macrostate taken together as members of an ensemble of system as shown in the figure. Dots in this figure represent various microstates of a given macrostate forming members of an ensemble. To define precisely a statistical ensemble is a collection of or a group of large number of exact thought replicas of a given macro state with each replica having same state parameters but can find themselves in one of all possible micro states represented by points in phase space for each ensemble. So in the Gibbs visualization different phase points evolving in time exploring the allowed phase space can be seen together at the same instant representing members of a group called an ensemble confined to a region in phase space. As time flows, each member of this ensemble can acquire any one of the all possible microstates. Statistical probability distribution function. What is that characteristic function which can describe this ensemble? First note, since we are dealing with a very large number of these systems, the points in phase space are very dense. We can define their density distribution function rho as a function of position, momentum and time, a function which describes how various members of the ensemble are distributed over all allowed microstates at different points of time. So that number of points that is macrosystems in the phase space volume d3n q d3np around the point qp of the phase space is rho as a function of q p and t multiplied by d3 and q d3 and p. Therefore, number of systems in the ensemble is given by m is equal to integral of rho of q p and t multiplied by d3 and q d3 and p. Also, density distribution function helps us to define the ensemble average written between two angular brackets say average of f of a physical quantity f q p which over different members of the ensemble may be different therefore ensemble average is defined as equal to an integral of f q p multiplied by density distribution function rho q p t d3 n q d3 n p divided by integral of rho q p t over d3 n q d3 n p. Here the integration extends over whole of the space but contribution comes from that region alone where rho as a function of q p n t is not equal to 0. Since total number of systems in the ensemble do not change with time t therefore derivative of rho as a function of q p and t with respect to time t is equal to 0. This implies that d rho by dt is equal to partial derivative of rho with respect to t plus summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n over partial derivative of rho with respect to q i multiplied by time derivative of q i plus partial derivative of rho with respect to pi 
multiplied by time derivative of pi or this is equal to partial derivative of rho with respect to t plus using Hamilton's equation summation over i is equal to 1 to 3n delta rho by delta qi into delta h upon delta pi minus delta rho by delta pi into delta h upon delta qi or is equal to delta rho by delta t plus Poisson bracket of rho with h is equal to 0. Two facts are well known. If the Poisson bracket of a physical quantity with Hamiltonian is 0, then that quantity is a constant of motion. Secondly, for equilibrium, physical quantities must be independent of time. So, if rho represents an equilibrium system, then partial derivative of rho with respect to t must be equal to 0. This implies that Poisson bracket of rho h is equal to 0, that is rho is a constant of motion. Equation d rho by dt is equal to delta rho by delta t plus Poisson bracket of rho with h is equal to 0 embodies a theorem called Loivili's theorem. Proof of Loivili's theorem. We will see the proof of Loivili's theorem in two ways by looking into the alternative ways of stating Loivili's theorem as well. An alternative way of stating Loivili's theorem is that the volume element of the phase space remains constant or the phase volume is a constant also called invariant of motion under canonical transformation of the coordinates q and p. Let us consider volume element d omega is equal to d 3 n q into d 3 n p is equal to product over i is equal to 1 to 3 n dqi dpi in phase space. As a physical system evolves in time, say it is found at point capital P at time t and is found at some later time t dash at another point p dash where pi dash and qi dash can be obtained from pi qi the initial point as shown in figure 2. This figure is a representation of the time evolution of phase space volume in phase space. This can be achieved in two ways. Set pi dash qi dash obtained from pi qi by integrating Hamilton's equations of motion. Algebraically, this can be represented as pi dash is equal to pi dash as a function of pi qi and qi dash is equal to qi dash as a function of pi and qi, where i is equal to 1, 2, to so on up to 3n. Equation 8 is a transformation of the set of variables pi qi to pi dash qi dash. So, the volume element of d omega to the corresponding volume element d omega dash obtained through this transformation is related by an expression d omega dash is equal to Jacobian which is a function of t and t dash multiplied by d omega. Here jtd dash is the Jacobian determinant of the transformation given below. To evaluate the various elements of the determinant let t dash is equal to t so that pi dash is equal to pi and qi dash is equal to qi and therefore Delta pi dash upon delta pk is equal to delta ik, delta pi dash upon delta qi is equal to 0, delta qi dash upon delta qk is equal to delta ik, and delta qi dash upon delta pk is equal to 0, where delta ik is chronicle delta, which is equal to 1 for i is equal to k and 0 otherwise. So all the diagonal terms are equal to 1 and all of diagonal elements equal to 0. Therefore, the Jacobian determinant is equal to 1. Let us now go to another instant t dash is equal to t plus dt and retain only first order terms in dt. Then, we have after using Hamilton's equation of motion, pi dash is equal to pi plus dpi is equal to pi dash plus pi dot dt is equal to pi 
minus delta H upon delta Q i into d p. Dot here is a derivative with respect to time. Also, Q i dash is equal to Q i plus d Q i is equal to Q i plus Q i dot d t is equal to Q i plus delta H upon delta P i into d t. Differentiating equations 11 and 12, we obtain delta P i dash upon delta P k is equal to delta i k minus delta 2 H by delta P k into delta Q i d t. Delta P i dash upon delta Q k is equal to minus delta 2 H divided by delta Q k delta Q i into d t. And delta Q i dash upon delta P k is equal to delta 2 H by delta P k into delta P i multiplied by d t. Delta Q i dash upon delta Q k is equal to delta i k plus delta 2 H divided by delta Q k into delta P i multiplied by d t. So, to evaluate the determinant equation 10, we note that each term containing an off diagonal member contains at least another off diagonal member as a factor. Since all these members are proportional to dt, these terms are therefore at least of second order in dt and can be neglected while evaluating the determinant. So, to this order, therefore, contribution comes from the diagonal element, which is nothing but a product of 1 minus delta 2 H by delta P K delta Q K D T multiplied by 1 plus delta 2 H by delta P K into delta Q K multiplied by D T which is approximately equal to 1 plus sum over K delta 2 H by delta P K into delta Q K minus delta 2 H by delta P K into delta Q K is equal to 1. Therefore, Jacobian over t comma t plus delta t is equal to Jacobian over t t plus derivative of Jacobian t double dash at t with respect to time evaluated at t is equal to t double dash d t is equal to 1. And since j t t is equal to 1, we have derivative of the Jacobian t double dash t evaluated at t is equal to 2 dash with respect to time multiplied by d t is equal to 0. Let us further consider an arbitrary third time t double dash and the corresponding volume element d omega double dash at time t double dash. Then going from t to t double dash and from t double dash to t dash, we have respectively d omega double dash is equal to Jacobian over t t double dash multiplied by d omega and d omega dash is equal to Jacobian t double dash to t dash multiplied by d omega double dash. Therefore, d omega dash is equal to Jacobian over t double dash multiplied by Jacobian over t double dash t dash multiplied by d omega is equal to j t t dash d omega or we find that Jacobian over t t dash is equal to Jacobian over t t double dash multiplied by Jacobian over t double dash t dash. Hence, differentiating with respect to final time t dash, we have derivative of Jacobian t t dash with respect to t dash is equal to Jacobian over t t double dash multiplied by partial derivative of Jacobian over t double dash t dash with respect to t dash. On the right side, taking t double dash is equal to t dash, equation 24 becomes partial derivative of Jacobian over t t dash with respect to t dash is equal to Jacobian over t t d dash multiplied by partial derivative of Jacobian t double dash t dash with respect to t dash evaluated at t double dash is equal to t dash. Since equation 19 holds for any time t, it also holds for t dash and hence equation 25 implies partial derivative of Jacobian over t t dash with respect to t dash is equal to 0. This relation holds for arbitrary t dash and given the initial condition j t t is equal to 1, one can on integration get j t t dash is equal to 1. Hence from equation 9 one gets d omega dash is equal to d omega. This means that the magnitude of the volume element in phase space does not change as it moves along the phase space trajectory. Furthermore, this result is true for the volume of any closed finite region followed 
along the phase trajectory. To state it more clearly, to every volume element d omega within that region at time p, there exists an equal volume element d omega dash within the region r dash at time t dash obtained from r by equations of motion. This amounts to saying that integrating right hand side of equation 28 over r corresponds to integrating the left hand side of equation 28 over r dash so that integral d omega dash over r dash is integral of d omega over r that is omega dash is equal to omega where omega and omega dash represent the volume contained within r and r dash respectively. This is Lively's theorem which states that phase volume is a constant of motion. Let us now look at the second way of looking at Lively's theorem which is more often used in statistical mechanics and is immediately connected with the density distribution function rho which is a function of q, p and t and can be stated as the movement of phase points treated as steady flow of gas in the phase space of six and dimensions moves as an incompressible fluid moving in physical space has derivative of rho with respect to t is equal to partial derivative of rho with respect to t plus Poisson bracket of rho with h is equal to zero. Physically this means that local density distribution of the phase points in a region as viewed by an observer moving with that region stays constant. Let us consider an arbitrary volume omega in the region of interest in phase space. Let this volume be enclosed by a surface sigma as shown in figure below. This figure actually represents phase points of a system as a steady flow of a gas in six and dimensional phase space. V is the velocity vector, d sigma is the area element, n is the direction of the area element, sigma is the total surface bounding that region. Then the rate of increase of number of representative points in the volume omega is partial derivative of rho d omega over omega the region of interest with respect to time where d omega is the volume element d3nq multiplied by d3np of the phase space, the total rate at which the representative points flowing out of the volume omega across the surface sigma bounding it is given by integral of rho v dot product with the unit area vector d sigma over the surface sigma. Here v is the velocity vector of the phase points in the region of surface element d sigma. n cap is the unit vector normal to area element d sigma. By Gauss's theorem, surface integral can be written as an integral over volume. That is, integral of the divergence of rho v over omega. The integrand here in phase space of 6 n dimensions can be written as that is divergence of rho v is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n over delta by delta q i into rho q i dot plus delta over delta p i over rho p i dot. Since the total number of representative points are fixed in phase space, the number of incoming representative points in the volume must remain equal. Therefore, partial derivative of integral rho d omega over omega with respect to time is equal to negative of the integral of the divergence of rho v over omega. That is, integral of delta rho by delta t plus divergence of rho v over d omega is equal to 0. Equation 36 is possible only if the integrand vanishes in the region of concern in phase space. Thus, we must have delta rho by delta t plus divergence of rho v is equal to 0, which is the famous equation of continuity of fluid flow, which in the present context is that of a flow of representative points of the phase space being treated as fluid. 
using 34 it can be written as delta rho by delta t plus summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 and partial derivative of rho with respect to qi multiplied by qi dot plus delta rho with divided by delta pi into pi dot plus summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n rho multiplied by derivative of qi dot with respect to qi plus partial derivative of pi dot with respect to pi is equal to 0. Since from Hamilton's equations of motion, we have delta qi dot over delta qi is equal to delta 2h over delta qi into delta pi is equal to delta 2h over delta pi into delta qi is equal to minus delta pi dot over delta pi. Therefore, the third term on the right hand side of equation 38 vanishes. And once again, using Hamilton's equations of motion, qi dot is equal to delta h upon delta pi and pi dot is equal to minus delta h upon delta qi, equation 38 becomes delta rho by delta t plus summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n over delta rho over delta qi qi dot plus delta rho by delta pi into pi dot is equal to delta rho by delta t plus summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n delta rho by delta qi into delta h upon delta pi minus delta rho upon delta pi into delta h upon delta qi is equal to 0 or d rho by dt is equal to partial derivative of rho with respect to t plus Poisson bracket of rho with h is equal to 0. Where left hand side in equation 40 represents the total derivative d rho by dt and rho comma h within square brackets is Poisson bracket. Equation 41 embodies the Lively's theorem. Significance of Lively's theorem and types of ensembles. Lively's theorem as seen in equation 40 and or 41 has some interesting consequences for arriving at functional dependence of probability distribution functions which we are going to find in later modules and help define different types of ensembles. We have already commented on the significance of the first term. The partial derivative of rho with respect to t becoming 0 implies a stationary ensemble. From equation 41 to be 0 implies that the Poisson bracket of the statistical distribution function rho with h should also be equal to 0, which can be made 0 in two possible ways. First consequence, since Poisson bracket of rho with h is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to 3 n curly bracket derivative of rho with respect to qi into qi dot plus delta rho by delta pi pi dot curly bracket closed rho is independent of position and momentum coordinates rho h will be obviously zero that is rho as a function of p and q is equal to a constant over the region of interest for the system under consideration this further makes calculation of ensemble average defined in equation 2 a simple relation ensemble average of f which is a function of q and p is equal to rho multiplied by integration of f over the whole phase space divided by rho multiplied by volume over the whole phase space is equal to integral of fqp over whole phase space divided by the integral over whole phase space which is equal to 1 upon omega integral of fqp over omega, where omega denotes volume of region of interest of phase space. This is a restatement of the principle of equal a priori probability, that is, any representative point in the swarm of points, as was shown in figure 1, is equally likely to be in the neighborhood of any phase point in the allowed region of interest. The ensemble satisfying equation 42 is called micro canonical ensemble. Second consequence. An alternative way to satisfy Poisson bracket rho comma h is equal to 0 is to suppose rho being explicitly dependent on the Hamiltonian h which is a function over p and q that is rho is equal to 
rho over a function of Hamiltonian. This gives us another type of probability distribution function satisfying equation 41. One of such ensembles is canonical ensemble for which the density distribution function rho is proportional to e raised to power minus h p q divided by k t. Ergodicity hypothesis time average versus ensemble average. To appreciate this theorem, we must note that for a given thermodynamic system, there are two ways of calculating averages. One way is to study the dynamics of a system over a long period of time and the other is to find average through a statistical description. First type of average is called time average and the second type is called ensemble average. Ergodic hypothesis requires that both these averages should be equal. Time average. The dynamics of the thermodynamic system is deterministic governed by Hamilton's equations. When we start observing the system at initial time t is equal to 0 and let it evolve to time is equal to tau, the state of the system evolves producing a phase trajectory and the Hamilton's equations can be integrated providing qp a set over qi and pi at every instant of time. If we consider a physical quantity fpq, we can average over this trajectory and calculate time average defined as time average of fqp is equal to limit tau approaching infinity 1 upon tau integral from 0 to infinity f as a function of qi and pi integrated over t, which is not a practical proposition to find all QIs and PIs for a thermodynamic system containing a large number of particles typically of the order of Avogadro's number. It is important to understand that it is time average which is experimentally observable. The alternative average is called ensemble average and can be defined as equal to integral of function f multiplied by the density distribution function over the phase space volume of interest divided by integral of density distribution function over the phase space of interest. Ergodic hypothesis. Ergodic hypothesis then says that time average of FQP is equal to ensemble average of FQP. Geometrically speaking, the ergodicity means that phase trajectory of a system passes through all the points to the region of interest defined by the surface h is equal to e. A system such as this is called ergodic system. The problem with this assertion is that topologically no single phase trajectory can fill all the energy surface. This led to an idea of quasi-ergodic hypothesis according to which over a sufficiently long time for a closed system defined by h is equal to e, the phase trajectory comes arbitrarily close to every point on the energy surface and then the time average can be replaced by the ensemble average. Proof of ergodicity hypothesis. To prove equation 47, let us follow plausibility arguments using Lively's theorem. According to ergodic hypothesis, since all points on the h is equal to e surface are reached by the phase trajectory of the system, any point of the surface can be taken as a starting point. This implies that time average of the function f is independent of the initial point. Any point on the phase trajectory can act as an initial point at time t is equal to 0. Therefore, let us take time average of the ensemble average of the function f that is the time average of the ensemble average of fqp. Since according to Lively's theorem, for a system its ensemble average is independent of time, therefore ensemble average is equal to the time average of the ensemble average or it is equal to the time average of the function under consideration. The importance of ergodic hypothesis lies in the fact that it resolves the difficult problem of calculating the mean value of a physical quantity over time 
by allowing its calculation over a set of exact replicas of the system at a single instant called ensemble average. Non ergodic systems. To see the violation of ergodic hypothesis, number of situations can be visualized. Here is one situation. Suppose there is a rectangular box with perfectly smooth walls containing atoms of an ideal gas arranged to move along straight paths in the figure adjoining here from left to right. This figure shows the meaning of non ergodic systems. Since walls of the rectangular box are smooth, the atoms of the gas will keep on moving back and forth between the left and the right walls and will never pass through any other points in the box, clearly violating the ergodic hypothesis. It must be noted that this is highly improbable situation and a small disturbance can randomize the velocities through collisions. Before we end this module, we would like to talk about three very important quantities. These are fluctuation, root mean square fluctuation and relative fluctuation. We must be aware of the fact that averages of the physical quantities are expected from the measurements. Yet, there is a possibility of deviations or fluctuations occurring from these average values. Study of these fluctuations is of great importance in many phenomena occurring in nature. For example, in critical opalescence, Brownian motion, etc. So, what is mean square fluctuation? root mean square fluctuation and relative fluctuation. Let us consider a physical quantity F corresponding to a physical system. As time progresses, this value varies about its average value as delta F is equal to F minus average of F. This variation about the average or mean value can be both positive and negative and its mean value that is average of delta F is equal to 0 and therefore is not of any significance. A better quantity to define is the scale of this delta F. Interestingly, its average value tends to 0 only when delta F scale tends to 0. Delta F scale can be written as delta F scale is equal to F minus average of F whole scale is equal to F scale minus 2 times f multiplied by average of f plus average of f square. Let us take the average of both sides. In 50, we get mean square fluctuation as equal to average of f square minus 2 times the average of f multiplied by average of f plus average of f square, which is equal to average of f square minus square of the average of f, which is mean of the square minus square of the mean. The ratio square root of, of the average of delta f square divided by average of f is called the relative fluctuation. Smaller the relative fluctuation, less is the proportion of time for which the system remains away from mean value. System size and relative fluctuations. Now we shall see that relative fluctuation decreases inversely as the size of the system, that is number of particles as they increase. For this suppose we have a system of n particles. We are interested in a physical quantity say kinetic energy of the system F which is an additive quantity corresponding to this physical quantity Fi say kinetic energy for each particle. That is, capital F is equal to summation over I is equal to 1 to N over small f I. Let us take the average and note that since each particle constituting the system is identical, therefore, average of f I of every particle is same. That is, say, average F. Then equation 52 can be written as average of capital F is equal to summation over I is equal to 1 to N over average of fi is equal to capital N times average of small f. So now if we calculate the root mean square fluctuation of capital F from average of f, 
and noting that since each delta fi average is equal to 0, average of delta fi into delta fj is equal to delta fi into delta fj is equal to 0, we have delta f is equal to f minus average of f is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to n over fi minus average of fi is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to n average of delta fi. Scaring equation 54 and taking the average, we get average of delta f square is equal to average of summation over i 1 to n delta f i whole square average is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to n average of each delta f i whole square. Again noting that because all the particles are identical, each delta f i square is the same for all particles. Therefore, average of delta f square is equal to n times average of delta f square. So, the relative fluctuation is given by square root of average of delta f square divided by average of f is equal to square root of n times average of delta small f square divided by n multiplied by average of small f is equal to 1 upon square root of n multiplied by square root of average of delta of small f whole square divided by average of f. Equation 57 tells us that the relative fluctuation of a physical quantity pertaining to a system varies inversely as the square root of the number of particles in a thermodynamical system. In thermodynamical limit, it approaches 0. So, students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. In this module, we have learnt about the abstract but useful concept of ensemble for a thermodynamic system, which is a collection of exact replicas of a given thermodynamic system in different possible microstates. That an ensemble can be described by a characteristic density distribution function rho which depends on position, momentum and time, that density distribution function when integrated over relevant phase space volume gives number of systems forming an ensemble, that the ensemble average is defined as mean value of a physical quantity equal to physical quantity multiplied by the density distribution function integrated over the whole phase space divided by integral of the density distribution function integrated over the whole space. That for a system in equilibrium, statistical distribution function is a constant of motion and is independent of time. That Lively's theorem can be stated and proved in two equivalent ways. First, the volume element of the phase space remains constant or the phase volume is a constant or invariant of motion under canonical transformation of the coordinates q and p. Secondly, the movement of phase points treated as a steady flow of a gas in the phase space of 6n dimension moves as an incompressible fluid gives the total time derivative of rho is equal to partial derivative of rho with respect to time plus Poisson bracket of rho with h must be equal to 0. That the significance of Lively's theorem lies in the fact that it provides a way to get probability distribution function as a function of Hamiltonian leading to the defining of microcanonical and canonical distribution function. That ergodic theorem provides equivalence between time averages of physical quantities which are experimentally measurable with statistically calculated ensemble averages. That Lively's theorem provides a way to arrive at a ergodic hypothesis. About the possibility of a non-ergodic system, we looked at. About the importance of fluctuations in the measurement of a physical quantity and how root mean scale fluctuations and relative fluctuations can be calculated. And that Relative fluctuations varies inversely as square root of the number of particles constituting the system. Thank you.